Hi everyone. Hi guys. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I am here today with a fun live stream. Today we are going to dye some yarn using some Easter egg dye tablets in a few different ways. And this is a technique that I love doing and I wanted to showcase this now in January so that way you could have a chance to decide if it's something you want to do before these dye kits come on sale in March and April. I usually like to pick them up right after Easter when they go on clearance, but sometimes they're hard to find. So if you want to play around with it, it's worth picking some up in advance. Hi and welcome. Oh, I'm so glad my picture in picture is working. Um, this way we can chat while we see what's going on with the stove top. So now I also wanted to do some over dyeing today, which means that we are going to be taking some yarn that isn't quite bare and trying to enhance the color. One of the yarns that we're using today is Knit Pick Stroll Tweed. This yarn is the color Down Heather, so it is a very, very pale gray, but it has this tweed through it, which I have no idea how it will take up dye or how it will look different after it has been dyed. The other yarn that we are going to use today is the Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. And the color of this one is Oak Tweed. This is a four ply yarn where three of the plies are a sort of oatmeal color. And then one of them is a darker brown. So, and I believe that these are all natural wool colors. But I thought that these would take up dye in a really interesting way. So I thought that it would be fun to play around with a 100% wool twist yarn in addition to over dyeing a gray tweed yarn. And so that should be a lot of fun. Now the Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool and my new Lion Brand affiliate link is in the description. But the Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool is 100% wool and it comes in skeins of 227 grams but I wound a hank out of it that is only about 100 grams. And what's left here, I also made a little mini skein, so what's left here is about 100 grams of yarn. They believe that this is worsted weight. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that it's worsted weight. Uh, the, the Stroll Tweed is 65% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and 10% Donegal Tweed. So it is very similar to the bear stroll that we feature in a lot of our videos, but is slightly, slightly different. But tweed yarns right now are 20% off through midnight Pacific time today on the Knit Picks website. So if you think that dyeing the tweed yarn and all, all the tweed lines are currently 20% off, you can pick some up of your own for over dyeing. So, yeah, I thought that the timing of the sale kind of matched perfectly with what was in my stash. But I know that you guys have been wanting to see some more over dyeing, so I thought that it would be fun to combine it with a semi-seasonal technique. And so now let's go over to the stove. And hopefully removing that camera worked as smoothly as adding it. Okay, so I have pre soaked and I guess I'll bring my pre-soak over here. So you can see, I have pre-soaked the yarns in just plain tap water. So here is my skein of the Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. And I am just going to, actually, I really want to do a semi-low immersion technique in this first, first technique that I'm going to show you guys. So I think I'm actually gonna add some vinegar to the pots first before I add the yarn. I don't have any heat on right now, which is why I feel okay having this plastic tub on my stove. So, hello, hello, and welcome. So I'm gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar to each of the pots. Now, and I'm gonna have to do this over this one. 
I've got cords in the way today. <laughs> So the Easter egg dye tablets do contain some citric acid, but as I've shown on the channel in the first video where I ever dyed with these Easter egg dye tablets, you really, really want to add more vinegar if you want the colors to strike. And now I am adding one cup of water to each of these pots. The reason why I'm doing it this way is to distribute the vinegar and the acid a little more through the pot before I add the yarn. Because if I were to add the vinegar on top of the yarn in really low level water, it just would be a little harder to mix up. So I thought that this just made some sense. Now I'm, the yarn was pre-soaking in just plain tap water and I'm not really going to wring it out because why not use the water that it came with? And so I'm attempting to sort of randomly arrange this in the pot. And you can see that, you know, while it is mostly covered with water, we are definitely, definitely gonna want some more. Let's see where that brings us. Okay, add another cup. So this one probably has four or five cups in water in here with 100 grams of yarn. And then our skein of the Stroll Tweed is only 50 grams today. So that's why I'm using the slightly smaller dye pot with this yarn. But it's fun because the gray actually looks a lot darker. Uh, right now, now that the yarn is wet. But so even with this one, adding it in, I might add a tiny bit more water, but the water level is actually meeting the yarn pretty well. Because again, I didn't really remove any of the water from my creso. All right, so we have, I would say between, because of the water that came in, I would say between you know, with this one between two and four, with this one between maybe four and five cups of water or so approximately, and two tablespoons of vinegar, which is a lot of vinegar. But, all right, just kind of squishing it a bit to semi-distribute things. And I am going to turn on the heat for both of these so we can start trying to come up to a low simmer and sometimes I start the heat up a little high and then reduce it but we I'll need to keep a little bit of an eye on it we don't want to overheat and now that I'm with the the bigger camera I kind of want to show so today I am going to use some of these pos Easter egg dye tablets that I bought in 2016. And I'm using some of the tablets from the classic kit, which has, you can kind of see in here, six colors, a yellow, orange, red, and then a teal, blue, and purple. And I think I'm gonna split these in the pots and do kind of a warm sunset colorway over here on the line brand yarn, and then more of a cool tone purple blue and green on our stroll and let me actually increase the uh, exposure let's see it's looking at tap there we go i think that's a bit better but i'll keep an eye on that um have i ever dyed yarn with black beans no i have not and some people have oh i don't think it's safe that some people have actually requested that and i don't really know how well it would work it's not something that i have done any research on So black beans, um, I think could be interesting. I am currently saving up, excuse me, 
some avocado skins and seeds to use uh, to do for some yarn dyeing. So that's something that I hope to showcase in the future. And oh, I can turn on, haha, I can turn on my little video so you can see me as we are, we are chatting and waiting for our guys to heat up and I can check the, the comments. Um, oh wait, nothing to see here yet. Do, can you guys see the feed? I see a lot of comments, but it looked like one person couldn't see it. Um, had success to overdyne oatmeal 100% wool with Wilton's Violet. Oh yeah, the please do post to the Facebook thread. And if you guys haven't joined the uh, Chemnitz Lab Group, which is a Facebook group, um, submit a request because a lot of people uh, who watch these videos are sharing their own home dyeing experiments and even some of the projects that they knit from them. And so it's just a nice, fun community to learn and share ideas for your own dining adventures. Um, who wants a Chemnitz retreat? Hey, that would be kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, can I, can I go? <laughs> um, Black beans give a vintage vibe. Huh, that's pretty cool. Um, oh good, I'm glad that the feed is working okay. Um, I, I would love to explore some more natural dyeing things. I have some other non-food coloring kitchen dyeing coming up in some future episodes of Dye Pot Weekly uh, that uh, should be should be pretty cool. I think that the thing that I'm not necessarily a fan of with some of these more natural dyes with like food items is that you can't necessarily, it's not easy to get a lot of variation of color. And I really, really like tonal, tonal yarns and stuff. And so sometimes when you get a more consistent all over color, it's just not, necessarily my favorite but that's one of the cool things about the i think it's the most recent episode of dye pot weekly um episode 20 with tea dyeing where i space dyed yarn with tea i thought it was so cool that the colors actually like stick in the regions where i placed the tea bags and so we got a multicolored yarn using different varieties of tea and someone asked me if the red teas did have if they had food coloring in them and i checked i found the box for the tea and they don't they have just some uh the red comes from one of the red juices that is in there um thank you this is the first time i am trying out this picture in picture you can see i kind of positioned it so that way you could still see both pots and i can even like on the fly like alter the size and shape of it a bit but hopefully i thought it would be nicer to be able to see my face while we're doing these waiting steps i'm just like staring at my screen trying to see if i see anything going on with my pots <laughs> uh, what else can i tell you about the dye tablets um so they have food color they obviously have food coloring in them that's the way the easter egg dyeing works and the oh i think this is the nine not the six okay but so they contain Within them, yellow five, blue two, red 40, yellow six, blue one, red three. So sort of a mixture of a little bit of everything. And so that can sort of, you know, that's one of the reasons why we will see things absorb at a variety of rates. But, oh, I'm really, really excited to, to do this and watch the colors spread out. Uh -huh. But in addition to that, the, the tablets have actually, can I just show you the ingredients? Nope, I'm not on the ingredients. There, rather than reading them out, I think there, now I have them on camera. So you can see what they contain, but it doesn't tell us what colors are in what tablet. So that is something that, you know, you kind of need to guess and see a bit. And the other thing, so here are some of the, the classic pellets, is it's a little hard to sometimes tell what color is what because the, like I think that the yellow is the one that looks super orange right away. And so the one way you can always tell, especially if you're going to be doing something where you're wetting the tablet immediately, is you could use a wet paper towel and sort of draw a line to get a sense of what color 
it is before adding it to the pot. But if I add the wrong color to a pot, I can also just use a spoon and pop it back out. <laughs> so that is my plan. But I did, I had so many, like I have bought so many of these kits, I can't even tell you. And so I now store them with telling me approximately like what kind of kit it was. Because when like the, the kits that have nine colors, they come with two different bags and it's just really hard to keep track of what colors. Ooh, you're gonna say tea dregs to see how it works. Can you over the yarn has been professionally dyed with acrylic dye? Um, yeah, I, I don't see any reason why you couldn't over dye some yarn that has already been dyed with acid dyes. The, okay, I hear that we're starting to bubble. Um, and oh, I can see it too. This is kind of nice to have like the little camera. The, you can over, I have over dyed yarns that I've dyed with food coloring. So I did on some roving, and there's a video on the channel, I snow dyed the roving, and then the colors had actually spread out a lot, so I took it and I over dyed it again with some food coloring. I braided the roving and then over dyed it. And so the food coloring stayed in position really, really well through the second dye. And so I have no reason to think that you couldn't do the same thing with acid dyes, because I know a lot of dyers that use acid dyes will dye things in multiple steps, um, so you might do a gradient and then add speckling, for example. And so when you're doing multiple steps, then, you know, the colors stick and stay. So it should work fine. All right. I think let's go see what's going on with these pots. Oh, all right. I'm really digging my new setup. <laughs> okay. So number one is getting hot. Number two, oh, we're getting warm there as well. So maybe I'll... The burner on this pot is a bit uh, smaller than the one on the other. Okay, so let's move Eek, my plate with the tablet ahead. I thought I had a pair of scissors. I do. Okay, so we've got our tablets. I even have some really old tablets, but I'm not entirely sure of the brand, but I have them divided. Um, once I figured out which ones were red versus purple, because it's a little bit hard to tell. All right. So I know that these are my blues and greens, but even then, see how, oh, you guys are sorry. It's way overexposed. Um, I'll come back over here. It's overexposed so you can see the yarn looking through. Oh, dear. Okay, so the blues and the greens actually look very, very similar. And it's possible that that's because these are pretty old, but actually, can I, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's possible because they're pretty old, but I'm nearly positive those are the blues and greens. And I believe that these are the purples, but I am not 100% sure because you can see that the reds and the purples look very, very similar. I think that these ones are the orange and that those ones are the yellow. But I'm going to guess and separate think, the dye tablets like so. And so we'll use six tablets in one pot and six on the other. And I know that this means that we're going to be using six tablets on 50 grams and then six tablets on 100 grams. But I thought that that would work kind of nicely. I did a yarn with these, with the green, blue, and purple colorway ones, and it came out amazingly. It was on the wool to dye for uh, base, and I thought that it was really, really, really pretty. And I also really enjoyed doing some sunsets as well. <laughs> so, all right, let's see. Oh, goody, I think both are bubbling, so we're ready to add our dye. Grab my those are forks. There's a spoon. Okay. All right. Not that you can see. And so, really, you probably should be wearing gloves. Not because of any. Whoops. Not because of any like danger. Just because you do risk um, coloring your fingers a bit. And so it's nice to not do that. 
let's add one of the ones that I believe is purple. I just plop that down into the middle of the pot and okay, that's looking purplish to me. Let's try. Okay, that's definitely, definitely a red. Um, so it's nice that you can see the colors strike pretty immediately. And then I think that these ones, that is one of the yellows, I think. Yeah, that is a yellow. So you can see I like pushing it down a little bit. Uh, just because you do want the tablet to dissolve eventually. Um, and, okay, so that's one purple. Let's put the other purple. Here I'm going to do it more regional. I'm going to put the two purples semi near each other. Oh, I don't know. Okay, are you, let's see. Oh, okay, this one is definitely a blue because the plate's a little wet. And let's guess that, nope, that one's a green. Eek, okay, well, so much for having my regional. See, this is where having a paper towel or something probably would have helped because then I would have been able to distinguish. But look at those colors, aren't they pretty? Can you really see? Uh, okay, they're looking, um, they're a lot brighter in person. But let's do, okay, our other red, our other yellow, and our other orange, and I will plop these down. So you can see how much color is dissolving from them already. And now, so it's possible the colors will stay a lot closer and not spread out as much as they do sometimes because I have water levels that are so low. But where did I put, hmm. wanted to grab a picture, but, aha, it's on the floor. <laughs> I always like having some pictures of things early on so then I can get a sense of how much they have changed with time. It kind of, the purple sort of breaks. It's so pretty. Oh, fun. You can see some of the green going out over there. You can always do things like add more water in the middle. Um, you can see I'm kind of poking a bit. But I think that some of the next stuff that we will do with these will be some cake dyeing. But I need to wind up those cakes. So I thought I'd come over and do that over here while we watch and wait for the colors to spread out. But I am going to move my head a little bit. <laughs> Let's see. Um, so you suggest dipping the tablets in water and draw a line of paper towel to check colors. Um, that is one way you can check colors. I think that I might not even dip them in water, but if you had a damp paper towel and just touched the tablet to the towel, you would be able to see the color. But if you wanted to insert the tablets inside the cake of yarn, which is something that we are going to do, I think, in the next iteration. Oh, I should set a timer. Uh, I'm not going to show you my set a timer for t uh, 10 minutes, and then we'll check in on these. But if you wanted to, uh, yeah, you, you could do it on a paper towel. It's a little trickier, I think, if you wanted to insert them into a pre-wound cake because you might not necessarily want to have it wet before you do that, but it's just something to consider. <laughs> yeah, so now it's basically kind of a waiting game, but the fun thing about this one is that you can watch a bit of spread of colors. But the colors do appear much more muted on the stream than they look in person. But I think that that's something that I'm still working on, adjusting the brightness of the stream. Oh, and the other reason why I store these tablets in Ziploc bags 
is just to add another layer of protection. So they're already sealed in plastic, but I wouldn't want to spill water or put them in water and then that would, you know, ruin, <laughs> ruin them. So that is something that I'm doing. But now I am going to, I have set up on a handy little stool ball winder so that way I can start winding a cake to use for some cake dyeing if everything works out and then we have time. And oh, I should have started this. I'm going to start over and start from the center because otherwise this will be pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah, so let me know if you have any questions about just about anything. Um, I, I suppose I can also, this is a good time to plug the Knit Picks is having a book sale. So you can get all of their books are already marked as 40% off, which is a really, really good deal if there's something that you've been wanting to add to your library. And I did a quick glimpse into my personal library on, on a short little video that I put out, I think, earlier, earlier this week. But you can also, on the Chemnitz website, I actually have reviews of my favorite books that I own and some also that I picked up from the library. So that is something you can pay attention to. I'm so glad you're doing this with Fisherman's Wool. Your husband wants a sweater in that yarn, but wants it mustard color. Ah, so yeah, I guess you could do, I mean, doing, dyeing this twist yarn could be a lot of fun because that would add a little more texture and dimension to the sweater, but they also have this in just a plain fisherman's like off-white color, and I think that you can get like the, the dark brown and also the oatmeal-y color as well. Um, over dyeing the oatmeal type color, which has some warmth to it already. A mustard color could be pretty nice. Another way to check dye tablets, put them on paper plastic plates, spread out with a small drop of water on it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but even though like today, I, and some of the other greens end up looking kind of pale over time. Uh, I don't know if something degrades in the green tablets over time or what, but we will see how our colors come out today. The nice thing about starting from the center of the ball, um, like I'm doing now, is that we've got a very, very loosely wound cake. Oh. Maybe I speak too soon. As I... We've got a nice loosely wound cake, which means that um, we should get some really, really good penetration of color. I mean, this almost looks the same size as a a uh, hundred gram cake, but it's only 50 grams. And so it's very like light and fluffy. Okay, that is our stroll tweed. And if you're just joining in, the base color of this one is down heather. And it's a really nice pale gray with the, and the tweed are black kind of camel colored. And there's some maybe oatmeal brown tweed nubs in here. So I am going to go and check on the pots. I don't want to block anything I'm doing. Ooh, so over here I see, so it's been about five minutes since we added them. And I see some nice like blue popping up in sections from the purple. So I'm not sure if this purple is a red number three or a red number 40 purple, but things are spreading out kind of nicely. I am going to tap down on our tablets just to sort of make sure they are nice and submerged in the water. Doing this also spreads out the dye a tiny bit. So if you don't want the dye to spread out and you can feel really patient, then, then you can wait on that. But the paper towel looks really pretty. Oh wait, you can't really see it because of I've up to the, the exposure so you can see the pots. Yeah. So you can see also while I'm doing this, there is a lot of dye still in the pot. But one of the nice things about doing an over dyeing technique is that if I have bits of gray in here, I'm not going to be disappointed. 
Whereas sometimes when I have a lot of white or something left over, that's not necessarily something I'm a huge fan of. So, and oh, I can see. So the, the stream where I'm seeing the comments is, I would say probably a good 30 seconds behind, like what is actually live. And so it's funny to see like the, the little bit of a delay <laughs> that I'm getting over there. Uh, yeah. Oh, I could have, I could have timed it to see exactly what the delay is, but I am, huh. Oh, cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad that you guys were able to join and feel free to interrupt with questions at any point. Um, but I do want to test a, another feature that I have, um, on, on the channel. And so this is something that I haven't tried. What have you missed? So what we're doing today is we are over dyeing some stroll tweed yarn in oatmeal heather color and some Lyon brand fisherman's wool in this oak tweed color. And we're over dyeing them using Easter egg dye tablets. And so right now, something that I want to test is a brief commercial, brief commercial break. Um, watching the ad will help support the content that you see in these streams. And so I am going to see, I've never pushed this button that says play ad before, but I am going to test it out and see how that works. Um, oh, so I guess it also says based on complex criteria, criteria, some of your viewers will see an ad keep on streaming. So I am learning about all of these things right now. Um, if you just watched or are currently watching an ad, thank you so much for watching it. Um, I am talking about nothing while that is playing, uh, <laughs> but watching video ads and stuff is something that helps support all of this content. So thank you so much. Yeah. And so the other stuff that I am working on right now is that I, so the first, the first skeins of yarn are, you know, I wound into circular skeins. We've got 50 grams of the, oh, I guess I can point. Aha. Okay. So we've got 50 grams of the stroll fingering in that pot. And then in this pot, we have a hundred grams of the lion brand fisherman's wool. And in both cases, we have six dye tablets from the Easter egg dye kit that we added to the pots. I am currently winding the basically the same amount of yarn in both cases. So 100 grams of the Lion Brand Fisherman yarn and uh, 50 grams of the Stroll Tweed into some center pole balls. So that way we can do some cake dyeing and we'll insert the dry tablets into the water around them and into the center or something as, uh, as we dye them. So that'll be pretty cool. Turmeric would work amazing if you want a mustard color. I have not played around with using spices uh, to dye. I do know, and I believe that turmeric is one of the spices that is in the um, a natural pie dye kit that I have. Um, they use one of the yellowish spices. And so that is something that I have that I need to play around with at some point. Um, I have a lot of new kits and stuff. I even picked up a naturals food coloring kit that I want to play around with. Um, I don't know how permanent any of the colors will be. I think that the red is with beet juice, so that might turn into a brown. The yellow should stay yellow. And I need to do some research on what the blue is in the like naturals kit. Oh, I guess that is our, see, this is a nice, super, super loose cake. That is our 10 minute marker for our space dyeing. And I forgot that you could see me in both places. So I want to make that go away. I forget, did you add vinegar? Yes. You definitely want to add vinegar when you are using dye tablets. If you do not add vinegar, the colors will spread and spread and spread and spread and eventually mix together. The first video that I did dyeing yarn with Easter egg dye tablets has me dye two different skeins of yarn. One where I did not add vinegar until near the end and one where I added vinegar closer to the beginning. 
So I can still see that we have, ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, our dye tablets are not completely dissolved. So one difference here between using the dye tablets and doing some space or low immersion dyeing with pouring in the dye is that because the dye is slowly dissolving, it takes a lot longer for the food coloring to strike to the yarn. So you can see that we still have a lot of dye in places, even though I think over here, maybe we have completely dissolved, but you can see how far the colors have spread out over there. Um, we also know from our other experiments that 100% wool will take up dye differently than the superwash yarns, but there's still in both of these cases a lot of dye left over and our tablets have not yet completely dissolved, which is one of the reasons why um, we still see a lot of color. But I'm really excited with the twist and because you can even see how the brown yarn, it's definitely going to, I think, taking up some color, but it does it a bit differently. So I'm going to set another timer for 10 minutes to come and check in. And if we need to, we can add even more vinegar. For whatever reason, the, the Easter egg dye tablets seem to require that I use a lot more vinegar than some of my other food colorings. And so, but I also tend to be pretty stubborn and wanting to get as much of the dye to absorb as possible. In some of my other videos, you see that we end up with some greens left over, but that tends to be from when I used the kits with nine colors. So a deluxe Easter egg dyeing kit. And I noticed because I actually tried to dye eggs with one of these ones that the green seemed to be pretty stubborn and that it didn't really add very much uh, color to the egg. So it's possible that, you know, the green or like the lime green color doesn't age very well. Um, I don't really know. Would add, adding more vinegar make it strike faster? Uh, yes, to an extent. Um, in this case, since we're, the tablets are dissolving, that also is something that affects things. But I kind of like that the, with these tablets that we are able to get the colors to spread out a reasonable amount. Um, and so with these low level volumes of water, I did add, you know, adding two tablespoons of vinegar is a lot of vinegar. A lot of times in my uh, stuff that I do, I will add two tablespoons of vinegar with eight cups of water or 10 cups of water. So the two tablespoons of vinegar in, you know, four cups of water is a much more acidic condition than um, some of the stuff that I do with the woman's color. But, I mean, the, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure. Oh. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, just a personal, um, personal message. Uh, what was I? Sorry, guys. Um, actually, haha, I can hide myself. Um, okay. All right, so looking closer at the ingredients, these dye tablets actually contain um, sodium bicarbonate, which is a weak base. Um, and so that is something that, that could be a reason why I need to add more acid than I'm used to because we needed just to get the pH. Oh, I could, well, the problem with using pH paper with food coloring is I'm not sure if the food coloring colors will affect the, uh, the, um, the color, the, the strip, but maybe at some point I can start playing with some food coloring, uh, with some food, like with using, I need to pay more attention to the pH for some of these experiments. Can we just buy tablets somewhere? So I have bought uh, some powdered food coloring, which I'm excited to play with, but I have not found just 
like Easter egg dye tablets or food coloring dye tablets somewhere like sold on their own, which is something that is kind of a bummer to me because I would like to be able to buy just the tablets and not the, the stickers, the egg stands, the uh, dippers and the magic wax crayon. I did donate them on one of the local parent Facebook groups, someone picked up a bunch of the stickers and other stuff. Um, I figured, you know, someone who's maybe going to do like an egg dyeing thing, like you could use like all the other stuff with just liquid food coloring. Um, and that's more cost effective than using the tablets, but I really, really like the tablets for space dyeing. So, you know, it's just something that I find to be a lot of fun to use. So I have not found a good place to buy just the tablets. And unfortunately, I haven't found a good place to buy just the kits either. Um, on Amazon, so you can see that, so this kit was $2.50 at Target full price. And then usually right after Easter, you can get them for 50% off. Uh, online, you can't buy them at Target. You have to, you know, they don't have enough of the inventory. You can't even buy them for picking up in store, which again is a bit of a bummer. And on Amazon, I think they charge like four or six dollars for them. I mean, something that like, you know, they really put a big markup on them. So it's something that this is why I'm doing this now. So maybe if you want to pick one up to play with, um, you can pick one up. And I know that sometimes I find them at the grocery store uh, around Easter, but the day after the Monday after Easter is the let's go to Target, let's go to CVS, let's go to all the supermarkets and see who has leftover dye stuff for me to buy. Sometimes big box craft stores have some, so they you can usually find them all over, but only in the window around Easter. Yes, so you can donate that you can donate the stickers to the local school. I'm assuming my plan in the past I gave some to a friend who to donate them to her church, um, and so you know it's since some of the some of the stickers I kept because they are, they were pretty um, like generic spring type things, but some of them also had, uh, you know, most, most of the young children I know, um, and that like we, my kids go to a Jewish preschool. So some of them, like otherwise I could go give them to my own school, but it doesn't quite work. <laughs> At my local grocery store, they always have a big excess of Easter egg kits after the holiday on clearance. Yeah, so that's like a good, a good time to pick some up. Someone um, through the like Facebook Messenger actually actually offered to sell me, um, to sell me some, or not even sell me to mail me some, some dying kits. But I really have a lot, and so wow, this is a really really loose cake. So loose that it's getting a little stuck on my ball winder. So one of, and actually I don't know if she's watching, but one of you had a quote on their own channel that was um, wind twice, knit once, which I kind of liked. When I'm doing the cake dyeing, if I'm winding directly from a skein, I often will wind it into a cake once and then from the cake, wind a second cake so it can be nice, and loose and big and fluffy. And this is really nice because this will, the tighter it is, the harder it will be for dye to get to the center of the cake. So that's why I like to wind them nice and loose. How are we doing on our time? Okay, so here are our two cakes that we will eventually use for cake dyeing. But It'll depend on, you know, how long this is taking over here. It's amazing what your friends have working in the back of their cupboards. Uh, random sprinkles, crusty drink crystals, dry food coloring, super stash builder. Oh, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think some of the, no. So at one point my mom gave me all of her old Wilton's food colorings, which was like, you know, probably as old as I am. 
Uh, and it's something that I don't think I held on to uh, because I think a lot of the bottles were crusted shut. There were rings on the box from where like they had leaked or from using them. And so I was like, oh, I don't know. But that was before I was doing so much dyeing. So if it was today, Rebecca, I would have been like, woohoo, let's like have a little dyeing party. Yarn dyeing party. Sometimes things sound a bit weird. <laughs> oh, but I'm really, really digging up. Oh, so am I flipped? Yes. Okay, so I'm not looking at a mirror. I, the camera is flipped. So if you look at the, the sunset colorway, we're actually getting a lot of really good penetration. Uh, it looks like a color. Um, it's not, they haven't really spread into each other, but they have spread out to cover most of the yarn nicely. And the same thing with the, the, gray, the gray one over there. And it looks like a lot of the colors are spreading out really, really nicely. And oh goody, the timer is about to bing, so I can go check. Hey, I wonder if you could use the gut of dried out markers, Crayola versus Sharpie Throwdown. Well, uh, Crayola, I only buy washable Crayola. So that would not be very useful for dyeing yarn. Um, I have thought about potentially bringing Sharpies into the mix for maybe an experiment. But, oh, I don't know, you know, like, I think that, so what I do have, and something that I would try before, I think trying Sharpies or other permanent markers, Sharpies sometimes wash out of stuff. I had some friends make a baby onesie using Sharpies, and when we washed it, it came out of the shirt. And so if something isn't going to stay through a washing machine, then it might not be something you want to do with yarn, because it would be really sad have it come out. But I do have some tie-dye markers. So they're like some tulip markers that are specifically for drawing on shirts and stuff. And I have some of those that I think might make an appearance in a sock blank type thing. So I want to know, can you see? Yeah. So see how much color is there right now? There's some blue. All right, I think that the dye tablets have dissolved a lot, but there is just a lot, a lot, a lot of color in there. So we're at about probably at least 20 minutes in, and I am going to add more vinegar. So I'm going to add two more tablespoons of vinegar. And not everything went evenly around there um, because my dribbles were not the best, but hopefully this is something that will help. And yeah, see, there's a lot of yellow and red and orange like in the pot, even though I think that at this point we've pretty much dissolved the dye tablets. But I am going to add some more, oops, some more acid to here as well. All right, and it looks like some of the color may have gone down a bit um, in here when I poured it on, but I'm just trying to, I don't really want to make things go into different areas. I'm just kind of trying to submerge. And so it's like patience, patience, everyone. Uh, I'm really kind of digging how these colors, oh, I wish. I wish that the colors came out a bit like better with the camera so you could really see how bright, but oh, I love these colors. But I think that the real reason why I love Easter egg dye tablets is not for this technique that we see going on on the stove, but is for the cake dyeing because I think that it like, it's really cool to insert some into, and I haven't decided if I want to insert them all around the ball, but you can insert just into the center or you can insert like even like within the cake in different sections. And so when sometimes, especially with, I mean, this is only 50 grams, but especially with a hundred grams of stroll, if you mix food coloring and then add the yarn cake, you can end up with a lot of white in the center, which can be really great, but sometimes you want a little more color within the entire cake. 
And so that is where, you know, being able to use this really helps because it's something that I suppose you could use a syringe and you could inject some dye on the inside of the yarn cake. But there's something kind of special about dry with no mess, adding stuff into your ball of yarn and then dyeing it. And ooh, ooh, so I have a hand wound ball of yarn video coming up um, as a Dye Pop Weekly episode. And that would be really fun to do too, to hand wind a ball of yarn and periodically put a dye tablet in there. And then, you know, add it to the pot and watch to see what color is coming out or see what stays within. Um, you just found Easter egg dyeing kits with matching color cups for mixing at Dollar Tree. Oh, I didn't even think about looking at the dollar store. There's a Dollar Tree really near my house. My Joann's closed uh, because of like problems. And oh, man, I wonder if I still have, at one point I had like a rogue dye palette. So sometimes I would get the kits and they would come with these cups, which I used in a acid dyeing video that's coming up to mix some colors. Cause sometimes it's hard to tell what the colors are of a concentrated dye stock. So I was like, oh, I'll put pink in the pink cup and blue in the blue cup. And so that was, kind of handy. But yeah, I have some of those. Yeah, the hand one ball that I did, I did. So I did one and this will be a die pot weekly episode at some point, but it and I forget what date I think sometime in February, maybe. But I added the 100% wool to the to the die back and I didn't add any vinegar at the beginning. And then after five minutes, I added some vinegar. So it gave some time for some of the food coloring to penetrate towards the center. Because with non dye tablets, like with non uh, Easter egg dye tablets, the colors strike a lot faster. So I really think that it just must be that um, you need a lot more vinegar to like move the acid into the other direction to get colors to bind well. Um, you've had success tie dyeing t-shirts with Sharpies by spraying them with rubbing alcohol first. Huh. Wonder if adding rubbing alcohol to the soaking water would help with color fastness. I'm not sure. I mean, I think that the, I can't think of anything that adding the rubbing alcohol would necessarily. I mean, it certainly would help the, the ink dissolve, but you can use rubbing alcohol to get Sharpie off of a whiteboard. Um, so the, it'll dissolve in the, the alcohol, but not water. Um, so I, I'm not sure. I do know that sometimes, like I have some things that have lasted with Sharpie and other things that haven't. So, I mean, it's always, always worth doing a test. Um, ooh, I also have food coloring markers and I mean, those are meant for like, you know, doing little designs on like the royal icing cookies, but I thought that maybe I might try to write a message on a blank at some point, but I have to think about what I would write. <laughs> Besides, hi, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz. Like, Cause I wouldn't want to, on a video, like if I was doing it for something I was going to make for say my husband, like I would write the song lyrics on there, but I can't really do that in a video. I'd have to do something that is like original me. And so on the fly, sometimes I'm not that, <gasps> No, I know what I could do. There are some songs I have. Well, at least they would give me permission to use because uh, Keith was in a band uh, when he was in grad school with a bunch of our best friends. And so sometimes I feature their songs in my videos because since, you know, I have the right to use the songs. Um, and so I could do free parking lyrics. <sighs> Ooh, I should do like hyper caffeinated or something, but I need to find, be like, Hey honey, do you have the lyrics written out? Or do I have to go back and like memorize? <laughs> Transcribe from the songs. Write a love note to your kids and make a video for Valentine's day. Aw. Yeah, no, that's what I, that's the, what I've thought about is doing, you know, writing on a soft blank. It would be really cool to write a love note or a letter to someone and then make you know, mittens, a hat, socks, and like give them a picture of the blank before you unwound it to knit it for them and be like, you know, this, you're carrying around like a love letter all the time. And that's something that I thought would be really, really fun. I, oh good, I did set a timer. I do have a 
really exciting uh, Valentine's Day special dyeing videos coming up. Uh, does anyone have a guess of what I might have done? I'd love, love, love to see if you guys could figure it out. So, you know, Crayola actually has a um, airbrush kit that is something I would like to play with, but I don't think I could refill it. And I'd really love to find a refillable one. But my Valentine's Day yarns are beautiful and fun and could totally be plutonic as well. So, uh, <laughs> but those, one, those videos will come out on Valentine's Day. And I did a fun little twist. And so, oh, it was, it worked way, way better than I expected at the beginning. I was so hesitant that in the middle of filming the first video, I was like, maybe I need to try this with another technique. And so I did a second video. <laughs> so there's going to be two. It'll be wonderful. <laughs> um, let me try the tulip color sprays. Um, so I have some because I thought that I was going to do some spray on for shirts for my Disney trip. But, and I think that I might have them in silver, glitter, and black. So I don't know how well the silver and the glitter would work on yarn, but it's something that maybe we could try. I'm not sure if it would end up being stiff. So I think I still want to try them on, I have some cotton project bags that I can dye. And so I think I might try them on one of those first. Or, oh, I should buy some stencils and I have a dyeing apron that I need to figure out how I want to dye. I should dye it and then I could stencil on chemnets so then I can wear it in some of my messier videos. That's what I should do. <laughs> um, so no, I have some of the tulip color sprays. I have not played with them yet. Um, the Wilton color sprays, which I like using, are also pretty expensive. So my current plan is to buy um, and this is probably going to be for Sock Blank Special 2, is to buy a Nisto, um, which is like one of those pressurized like oil for spraying oils and stuff, but you can also use them for lemon juice. And if you can use it for lemon juice, then you can use it for food coloring. So that means it doesn't need to be super viscous. And then you can add whatever food coloring color you want, pump it up, and then maybe you can get a spray that's similar to the Wilton Color Mist, but at a you know, there's like a one-time $10 cost versus like full price, four to $5, like a can. Uh, dying with wine for Valentine's Day. I do need to do wine dyeing again, maybe with some of my mordants, um, but no. Sock blank stamping cards. Oh, that would be fun. And in Sock Blank Special 2, I do hope to try, maybe not stamping, but I want to kind of do some stenciling with some cookie cutters. Uh, but hearts was a very, uh, yeah, hearts is my, my hint, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> that. but yeah, that, that's something that will be fun. But, oh, sock blank special. So I had so, so much fun doing the first sock blank special. And one of you suggested that we do some kind of dialogue. So I am currently writing up some, a post to help give like suggestions and for planning. I thought that, and I forget exactly what date I'm like planning this for, but at the end of February, we're going to do sock blank special two, a Chemnitz dialogue. And so I'll give some suggestions of materials and stuff that you should gather and some different ways, like places you can buy sock blanks or get a crank knitting machine and make your own. And then over the course of a week, I'll have some pre-filmed dyeing videos, but also I'll have multiple live streams at uh, different times of day. And so then, you know, you guys can maybe join in and dye along with me. So I thought that's something that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see. I got stiff as I was sitting down there. Let's see where we're at. So this is... 10 minutes after adding more vinegar and we still we still got some color i mean the reds definitely struck um you can see that the purples haven't spread out very much but we still have you certainly do not need to ever wait for the dye to exhaust i just you know it's hard for me 
to not try to get all the color I can. There's just a lot of red and stuff. So you can see, like, if you've watched some of my other videos and you see how quickly the colors strike, it's just, you know, pretty remarkable. I'm wondering... So I do have, the water's not clear, so I'm not sure. Oh gosh, this is kind of ancient. I don't think I can even turn it. Okay. So I have here some pH paper, some ancient, ancient pH paper. And I am curious what it says. Huh. Interesting. Can you guys see? Maybe not. Um, so I have not ever done and tested the pH of my dyeing really closely, but I just tested it. And you can see that it's about a 7, which means that this is pretty neutral. Now, if I was to do just, here's my vinegar spoon, and test the pH of the vinegar, you can see that that turned orange. So the pH of just the vinegar is closer to a three. And I'm not sure where I normally try to be, but I think that I just need to add more acid. I think that this is just not enough acid. And this is something that um, is really uh, enlightening. And also enlightening that the pH paper did not seem to take up the food coloring. All right, so, you know, maybe I should have been doing some better science, guys. All right, so we're neutral, at least in this one. So if I add one, two, I'm going to go ahead and add two the other pot as well. Which unfortunately, you know, the acid doesn't necessarily spread out very well because of our low levels of water. But let's test another kind of carefully like do 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 Spread around, guys. Aha! So, the pH, so I just checked the pH of the, um, uh, the, the camera, okay. I checked the pH of our stroll pot, um, and now, oh, oh actually, the, the indicator's on both sides. And so now we're probably more at a pH of 6, which is in the acidic range versus the neutral range. And so we will see if that is a, enough to help uh, yeah, and it looks like I'll check in one other spot as well. Yeah, and we're also definitely um, it's funny, I, well, I put this in both like a yellow and red section. And so but in both cases, it's turning orange versus yellow. So I am actually very, very interested now. Let me set uh, another timer for 10 minutes. But now that we are more acidic, interesting, interesting, you'd see, if I've had pH paper in my house for years, why have I not been checking? I don't know. Uh, let's see if there's been any questions. Where did I buy the, the pH paper from? Um, I It's something, I have no idea. It is something that I, I got as a sample when I was, a, when I was uh, doing like stock ordering. And for, for a lab. So um, let me see if I, where did I put it? So this is 
micro pH hydrin. Um, let's see. I'm looking it up. I mean, this is old. This is really, really old. Um, But it looks like there are some, aha, uh -huh. so I can see, here we go, I will pop a link into the chat right now, do, do, do. come on, give me the link. I'm running the dashboard. Um, on another computer so that way like the processing power of this guy can all go towards bringing me to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I found um, and it looks like it's a like also like a one to 12 indicator on Amazon. I mean people other uses for these besides dying would be for people who want to do, um, gosh, if you want to do, like if you're doing a fish tank or sometimes with pools, there's all kinds of reasons to check the pH of stuff. But one, if you've got kids, one thing that is kind of fun is to use pH paper. And I mean, I did this when I was sh showing my, at the time, I guess it must have been four-year-old cousin, my lab. I put pH paper in a contain like in a in a bottle um with a magnetic stir bar and you could do this with something that you shake as well and it sort of dyed the the color of the solution a little bit as well and then i added either a little bit of an acid um either a little acetic acid and then um, a little bit of a base and then we watched the color change back and forth and so that was just something that was really cool for a kid when you add something clear to something and then watch the color change. But anyway, this is the um, pretty close the pH paper that I just popped the link of into our chat. And so I am now so, so curious to see whether um, now that we're acidic and I have a timer and I'm waiting very, very, very patiently um, if we will actually see the colors bind. But this would explain, this would explain why I was like, gee, what is taking so long? So, and the other thing is that if I tested the pH at the beginning of the experiment, so if I initially looked at the pH right off the bat, the pH will slowly be going up, which when a pH goes up, that means it's getting more basic and less acidic because as the dye tablets dissolve, it's going to make the solution more and more, or I guess it depends. It could, it will make the, the solution less and less acidic and potentially bring it to neutral or basic conditions. And we know that blues and it looks like yellows don't, and I mean, reds probably don't bind well in acidic conditions. Um, I'm curious what the pH of my tap water is. because I see reds that sometimes strike right away. So actually, the pH of my tap water by itself is about, looks like about a six. So I might need to add, um, so for, for the strip to have been yellow initially, that means that it was seven close to neutral. That means that, you know, I need more, more acid. And so I don't, I haven't done research into what the ideal pH is for dyeing yarn. But in this live stream with you guys hanging out, I was like, well, gee, why don't I see why this is taking so long? We, we're, we're figuring something out. So maybe I'll need to add even more vinegar. Um, but in four more minutes, I'm trying to be patient. I will, I will check again and see if our colors are absorbing. I love using red cabbage to dye. I can use it as a pH indicator. Yeah, I want to... Uh, play around with red cabbage is definitely on my list. So in order to get it to dye fiber, do you need anything else besides 
I mean, if you don't want the color to change, do you need vinegar for dyeing your own red cabbage? Um, I need, I could look up a tutorial, but if you want to tell me some more about it in the chat, that would be awesome too. <laughs> oh, so I'm curious, but what colors, what time is it? It's 1.10. Okay. I've got Wednesday on Wednesdays, my um, eldest has dance class. So my youngest stays at extended day. So I get to pick up an hour later, which is why I usually do live streams on Wednesdays because that gives us some time to hang out. But I think if this takes too, too lo much longer, then maybe we'd have to save these for another day. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see how long it takes this color to absorb. <laughs> oh, I'm so, so glad I figured out how to do like a picture in picture. I wanted to buy a second webcam, but I'm like, if I'm small, maybe the computer monitor will work well. Oh goodness. I wonder if my brightness is just off or so red cabbage tends to fade a lot. Okay. So if it, if it tends to fade, then maybe it's something where like a mordant or something would, would help it. Um, I, yeah, but it's something that avocado, um, I mean, a bunch of you requested black beans earlier on the stream. Um, what's this with the pH and yellows and blues? Okay, so I maybe didn't explain um, so well. So what in my personal observation <coughs> with food coloring, and I know a lot of other people will talk about this, reds need a lot less acid to bind to the yarn. Um, especially red number three. It binds really, really fast. And I have found that the red number three will bind to yarn even without any additional vinegar, which is something that you can kind of see in that pot over there with the purples. The red number three just kind of stays in its little spot versus the other colors are spreading out a lot more. Red number 40, the yellows and blues need more acid and heat to bind. This is why we can get the really cool color breaking that we see with Wilton's Violet and some other colors because um, the red strike first and that leaves the other colors to show up on, you know, <coughs> excuse me, on our yarn. So sometimes a strategy can be to add, start with very low vinegar to let the reds bind first and then increase the level of vinegar to get the other colors to absorb. But the problem with when I was trying to even do a mostly solid purple is that the reds bind so quickly that even without no with no vinegar, they will start to stick to the yarn. Um, and we saw, because I just tested that the pH of my water is um, slightly acidic. And so the, I, okay, so the, if you guys don't know acid-based chemistry, and I'm not really going to go into it, but these numbers are a logarithmic scale. So the difference between, you know, seven and six is not the same as like the difference between seven and six and seven and five is not just, you know, twice more. It's a much bigger, bigger gap than that. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not really going to, I'm gonna go into that too much, but you can fix it more uh, with the uh, red cabbage. You can fix it more using a mordant, but it still fades over time. That's a bummer if it fades over time. Boo! I guess I'll still try it because people have been requesting it, but uh, bummer for fading over time. Uh, ooh! Okay, there's our timer. Let's go see. And let's see if I need to pump up our acid even more. Uh, Aha! Okay, so there's still some teal, but this is definitely, definitely paler than it was before. We've got a lot less blue. There's still, there's still some blues, but we are finally, finally, I think, starting to... Okay, there's... You yarn! Come on! All right. Let's, let's do three. See how much acid there is goodness gracious so this is why you've seen in some of my others i'm just like 
All right, let's just add a ton. So maybe in the past, well, and you can see there definitely, when I add the vinegar, it's not rinsing the color out. So there is color there. But in the past, when I used to, before I started measuring more, I would just do like, oh, a healthy splash. Maybe that's why things worked a bit better. All right. Okay, so I did three. So this is nine tablespoons of vinegar in both of these. That is, my friends, a lot of vinegar. Oh, let's test our pH. Hmm. Okay, so you maybe I mean this one came from oh actually they're on the right side. So we're definitely acidic, but I forget what color the vinegar turned. Okay, so the straight vinegar, yeah, definitely turned more of the red and would be between like maybe a three and a four. Ew, guys, this is... I'm glad that I learned something though. I was hypothesizing that there was some, that it was, that the tablets must be a little basic for this to be an issue. Um, it took me, okay, so this makes a, t a ton of sense. I was the one who experimented with juniper green last night and posted on Facebook. It took me so much vinegar to get the green teal to bind while the brown took right away. Yeah, so that's the different colors binding at different rates. Um, so with, so when I do Wilton's black, and this is with, you know, results probably vary because I think regional acidity of water varies a lot. But when I do Wilton's black, um, I will frequently start with two tablespoons and eight to 10 cups of water. And then I need to add an additional tablespoon for the rest of the blues to bind because otherwise you can just wait and wait and wait and they just will not absorb. Um, with, but the Wilton's violet, the blue in there, which I think the blues are different um, just because of the brightness of them. Uh, with the Wilton's violet, the two uh, tablespoons of vinegar and eight to 10 cups of water is plenty. So this is something that like you get from feel over time, but I mean, we're definitely getting really, really cool yarns. And I wonder, so the one time I did space dyeing with this, I did, I hosted a dye along for my crochet club and I did this on one of the wool to die for like the, like Sheila's gold or something like one of their like standard sock lines. And the colors were like beautiful, but I, for the life of me, do not know how much vinegar I added. So, can you make your wa tap water more basic than add dye and yarn and then add acid? Um, you could, I'm not, oh, you know, in order to get reds to not strike as fast? I suppose you could. Um, you could add some baking soda or something to it. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's something that or honestly, I could try starting with distilled water, uh, which would probably be pretty neutral. Um, that might be easier than adding a bunch of other stuff uh, to it. But <laughs> he says, did I set? Yeah, I set the timer again. These guys are stubborn. But, oh man. Okay. Um, while... Uh, um, forgive if this has been covered. No, no worries about re-asking questions. Um, and if I miss a question on the feed, please feel free to ask again. Sometimes the chat is really, really active. And so then I can't, I miss things, um, especially since I don't see the questions when I'm up and about. So no, no asking for forgiveness for asking questions. Um, is it possible that the natural lanolin in the fisherman's yarn is preventing or slowing the uptake of the dye? Probably not. Um, the, I mean, I dye wool yarns all the time that have lanolin and whatnot in them. 
and I don't do anything to try to strip the oils before dyeing yarn. So it's really just with these Easter egg dye tablets, and this has happened with Wool of the Andes as well, where it's been pretty stubborn. And I finally checked the pH after saying, mm, maybe I should check the pH. And I finally did it because I'm really sitting here while we are dying, dying our yarn. And I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's really, I think it's really a pH thing more than anything, anything else. And I think that, I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> But I, you know, and I could do um, with, I, I do have some of a mini skein of this fisherman's wool that we could do with just some, actually, um, maybe I'll set one of those up on top and I'll just do some food coloring and show that the colors strike a lot faster. Um, actually, I could set that up right now. Give me a moment. Because it looks like we might need to save the cake dyeing for Friday. Um, what kind of setup do you use to, to dry roving? Um, to dry it, I have, so if I'm dyeing with food coloring, I'll put the roving through the salad spinner, and then I have a drying rack upstairs. It's one of those really cool IKEA drying racks that like makes this really big horizontal plane. Um, so you could dry probably like a dozen shirts or something at a time. Uh, and So uh, I'll see if I can find a picture of that. Can you join rack? Nope, nope. Okay, so I don't on Amazon the one that I have but I'm gonna put in a link for one that is similar to the one that I used Um, this is, so the, the setup of it getting horizontal is the thing that's the, the, that's equivalent. I think the Ikea rack was much cheaper. It was closer to $20. Um, but what I ran out to grab was this mini skein. So this is the same fisherman's yarn and it's about 20 grams or so. And so I think I'll just set up another pot and we'll dye this with some food coloring. And, okay, it's a bit early. Aha! Guys, we're finally... And we still got some blues, but... Okay, a lot of red. Come on, dude. Okay, the Fisherman's is being way more stubborn. Oh, but also we've got um, untreated wool versus superwash. And we know that the superwash binds stuff a lot faster. Okay, so I've got... In this pot, uh, I'm going to put about four cups of water. And which one's bigger? This one. Okay, so in that pot, I have four cups of water. And I'm going to go ahead, I'd be tempted to do just one tablespoon of vinegar, but I'm going to go ahead and put in two tablespoons of white vinegar in this pot back here. Because this is a lot less, um, this is proportionally more vinegar than I normally use, but compared to what the amount of vinegar that I added to these pots, it's a lot less. And let's actually, so I've got my pH paper, check and, okay, so you can see, oh, maybe because of the brightness, you won't, Oh no, maybe you can see. So it is, say probably close to a six or so. So similar to where, oops, I lost the edge. It's similar to where 
these pots are now. Oh, maybe not even quite. Maybe it's, no, I was wrong. It's more, oh no, maybe those are similar. Um, okay, so that's, that's good to know that maybe around a five, six range is where I normally am when buying yarn. And let's do, uh, gosh. So I know that, okay, so it's not that hot yet. Do I have a, do I have a glove? Okay, I'm gonna turn off this timer. I'll set it just so I know for another 10 minutes, but Okay, I've got, and I know this means some of my reds might crash out, um, but before this gets too hot, I have this vial of Wilton's Violet, and it is mostly empty. So I'm not measuring the amount of food coloring, but I am, and the water is warm but I can still reach my hand in comfortably. Oh, come on. It's like caked to the side. Okay. Attempting to not dye my hands. There's still probably some dye in here. So I still am not at the point where I'm throwing away this vial. But now I am going to add, oops, where did my, oh, there's my mini skein. So the mini skein is still wrapped in this little hank, which is something that I actually like to do to get some asymmetry of the way that the colors bind. But this is totally dry, um, so you can see I hope that I am attempting to submerge it. <laughs> Since it is dry, it is giving me some struggle. But you can see already, do you see the pink on there? Um, my in, in frame. Um, so the reds are, because they do this so fast, the reds are already binding to our yarn. And maybe I'll untwist it after I get a bunch of these reds. So that way it can just kind of go into the pot. Can you, you guys can't really see in there, can you? Hi, have dye wool. Here's a tip if you're worried about your dyes striking. Soak with a small amount of dish soap to soak it in. It opens up the scales on the fiber. Interesting. I've never used... Okay, so I'm going to just... Since it's hard to see in the pot, I don't know if you guys can see the the pink. Ooh, that's like a nice hot pink right now. And there's still a lot of blue in there, but all right, we're mostly submerged. I will let that go for a while. Maybe I will unwrap the skein at some point. Um, I have no idea, and maybe I should have measured I have no idea how much dye I have in there. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, probably less than a tailspin. Okay, if we look at this pot, we have some blues left, but our water, yeah, there's some blues left, but the water is basically much, much clearer. But it took adding that extra vinegar. And what is going on? with this orange. Okay, over here we're kind of clear, but even this red. Dude, I know that there's a little more, I'll add one more tablespoon of vinegar over here. But goodness, goodness me. Okay, so just to see, because we weren't quite at heat. So we've got a lot of blue left in our pot back here, kind of turning it over because our yarn is now definitely wet. And we'll see, but the red, so the red in the red pot is probably 
very, it's probably got some red number three, but then the rest is red number, probably red number 40. So I really don't know what's going on with it. Um, but I think actually what I might do, um, I'm going to turn off the heat on this pot, move it back and actually turn off this rear pot and move it forward. And so one thing that I will point out is that I added in this one, which doesn't make the comparison totally fair, okay, but we're now starting to bubble. So I added the yarn to this pot before the bubbling started in. Oh goodness, that color looks odd. <laughs> totally odd. Okay, so I'm gonna reduce the heat. We can see that we're now at a simmer and we've got some nice bright blue color in there. Um, I am, I think now going to try to open up the skein of course, because of cords, I have to walk all the way around the kitchen to get to my tongs. Um, so actually, since this is only 20 grams in this pot, that is a lot uh, of dye. Okay. But gonna unwrap and then twist and hoo hoo. You see those fun, fun patterns from the breaking uh, from our twists. Okay, give this fiber a little more access to the dye. Uh. I think this is the first time I've ever tried dyeing uh, fishermen's. But that is not that hot. Maybe that's why. I mean, I don't go around sticking my hand in boiling water, but. Uh. Oh. Okay, wait, no, there's still some yellow. Yellows tend to be, I think, pretty stubborn as well. And some oranges are actually a yellow. I forget if yellow number five or yellow number six is used for orange. Um, that's still a lot of blue. But you can see that the reds, the reds struck this really, really, really fast. Uh -uh. And when I'm doing my dip dyeing with Wilton's Violet, I pretty much go until the reds have bound and then I add the rest into, into the pot. Those colors are really pretty. It's funny, I almost, oh no, I can still see the twist. Um, but you can tell by how much blue we see right now that there was a lot of food coloring that went in there. Uh, let's see if there are any questions. Um, hi! Hi, little bean. I watched some of your video earlier and I kind of want a, uh, <laughs> A, a sock, one of those knitting machines that you have. <laughs> you said I'd make more socks. So I was like, whoa, in the ribbing. That was really, really cool. Um, puts my hand crank singer machine to shame. <laughs> oh. But anyway, while we are waiting on these yarns and I am just chatting, I am going to play a brief ad. So if you see this ad, I think that you'll still be able to see the stream as I come back. But thank you so much for your support. Um, and yeah, so I, I think maybe you won't see it if, uh, yeah, if you, Little Bean, you are an enabler. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm also like, ooh, I need to email her and you're like, I want one of those like, big, like, I don't know if it's a chafer, is that how you pronounce it? One of the like catering pans. I'm like, ooh, ooh, these are all tools I want. And I saw your boxes of acid dyes. I was like, oh, someday. I'm like, I, I was mixing in my own colors the other day, but I was like, man, 
how nice would it be to know the hue that you're going to get without mixing? Um, Little Bean just released a video with, and I don't know the name of, I don't remember the name of the, the softening machine, but it's like a knit, like you can make legit socks on it versus the knitting machines I have, you wouldn't really get a good, like it's too loose to actually do for socks. And so I think that she posted that video today. Um, I was like, ooh, I should go look at this. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, this looks fancy. <laughs> Um, yeah, <laughs> <coughs> sorry from the, the talking. Okay. Let's go check on our, um, Wilton's violet pot. I have a feeling that these cakes that I was going to dye might need to wait, um, for another day. But if you're just joining, I actually checked the pH of some of these now. Okay. We still have got a lot of blue in here. Look at those colors. Um, okay, I'm going to add a third tablespoon. So maybe this fisherman's wool is a little more stubborn. Or I just added a redonkulous amount of, <laughs> of dye since I was just swishing my, my thing around. Okay, I upped the heat here. Nope, we still got lots of lots of color and i forget if i'm up to 10 tablespoons i mean we're definitely definitely within like the range can i set this yes can you see kind of um so with our super wash yarn we finally got the easter egg tablets whoa okay to basically absorb but i think i'm gonna go ahead and take that out of the pot but we discovered that the dye tablets contain base, like a basic compound in there. And so that makes it annoying <laughs> when you're using them for dyeing yarn because it actually raised the pH of my tap water um, to being above where my tap water is. Okay, so here is, oh, that's not very much color left at all. Um, I haven't drained a lot of the yarn, but here is the colors coming through. I'll bring, oh my, no, you guys are way overblown. I've been looking at my screen because I was trying to keep it up so that way you could see the colors here. I'll bring this over in a minute, but so there is some blue in here, but compared, that's really not that much color left at all. And I'll check. Yeah, there's still a lot of blue in there. Um, whoops. No, no, no. So the timer. Reduce the heat on you. Okay. Yeah, because I upped the exposure so that way you could see like what was in the pot better. But I've been looking at my picture in picture. So here. There we go. You can't, I don't think the purples are really reading through. Um, but what's kind of cool is that the like tweed nubs don't really, didn't seem like they took up very much color at all. So I see these like white flecks um, in the yarn in some places. So I'm really, really curious to see how this one washes and dries. And yeah, I don't think the purples are reading through, but we definitely, there's even a tiny bit of gray Left it. Oh, maybe now. Um, it's, no, it's still not really coming coming through. But uh, I do need a wet. It's cool, but we've got like a really really cool uh, cool gradient. Uh, so that is pretty, and I know that you cool. And I'll do like a recap with the the dry yarn. Um, when it's when it's ready to go at some point and I think at the next timer I will probably give up on our okay on that that yarn <laughs> oh 
Yeah, it looked like cause it looked like that was an intense, an intense video to film. Um, Oh, cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted when watching uh, how it was coming through. It's funny how much brighter things are on um, that come through the stream and show up on my monitor. But yeah, and oh, and I didn't even buy a second camera yet. I'm using my laptop to do that way I can like actually chat and not have have there be a little more something on screen than just the like pots as we're waiting and waiting. <laughs> but yeah, I pulled out my wherever it is, my pH paper um, to actually check because I was frustrated and it was something that I've been meaning to do, but then haven't done. So it's nice that I finally did it. <laughs> but yeah, I think that these, so maybe on, oh, you had to back, oh, so when it, after the ad, it came, came back, I was chatting mostly just about, um, other, other streams. Um, but thanks, thanks for that feedback. Um, yeah, the, I have no control over what ads play or anything like that, but um, I was curious about adding one. And so I'll try to keep track. It says, you know, keep on streaming. So uh, that's what I was trying to do. But hopefully things didn't get messed up. Um, you pop your, well, uh, yeah, yeah, having the, the, the two camera. Because I, I was considering getting a second webcam. But I was like, should really make sure I know how to use the one before I go to two. But yeah, so of the two yarns we were dyeing today, I made some really loose cakes, um, but I think that I will save these and maybe, I think on Friday I might be able to pop back on. So maybe I'll do a live stream on Friday where we will do like a part two of this uh, dyeing, dyeing these yarns with our dye tablet. And then next time, what will I do? Start with a lot more vinegar? Oh yeah, we're gonna, we're going to up our vinegar and it'll be wonderful. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I think that the ads that you see might vary depending on the viewer, because I think that YouTube and Google um, somewhat uh, target you based on things that you've been shopping for and things that you search for. Um, for example, we like I started seeing a lot of Frank's Red Hot commercials um, after I was like, oh, we need to buy some more Sriracha. So, and I've been like, and I, yeah, did, typed it into something. So yeah, they're pretty aware of what, <laughs> what we, what we do. Um, but, oh yeah, oh yeah, I need to see my huge, I almost, so if I'm going to be doing a lot with these Easter egg dye tablets, maybe I will need to get the Costco size jug of vinegar. I'm not quite there yet, but um, I've been buying it by the gallon this year. This is my second big one. All right. It's been five minutes. And of course, when I'm trying to do the example, some of these blues are being stubborn. But I think that it's because I added a ton. I mean, these colors on the yarn are very, very vibrant. Um, I think that I added a ton of dye, especially for only doing a 20 gram mini skein. And I'm curious, um, and I, as I'm still holding it. So, but this has cleared way, way faster in just, I think, what, 15 minutes in the pot? That's slower than I see normally with Wool of the Andes, although maybe I let it sit for 15 minutes, I'm not sure. Um, but Oh, good. You can see how bright those blues are on the stream. Okay. All right. This is basically not budging. Um, so if you're getting frustrated and your colors are being stubborn, I think we're going to see why I frequently see a bunch of green at the end uh, with some of these guys. But 
you can always, so I turned off the heat, so you can always let it cool in the pot, and as you're doing that, some more colors will absorb. Or you can decide to just remove it. And yeah, so it looks, the color of the pot looks yellowish, but if you're looking at the color of the runoff, that's pretty yellow. Um, this is really, really pretty. So I'm not sure how much rinsing this will really require. And I'm curious if I am, once again, just super blown out. I think it's because of the, oh no, I guess you can see a bit, but I'll put on my, my other camera so you can see. See the colors of this yarn and how it's not really giving a true feel of how bright it is, but I, from the way that the, the runoff was and actually how pale that runoff is, a lot I know a lot of the color is in the yarn. And I've done these sunset type colorways a lot. But I can now say, if you're gonna be using these Easter egg dye tablets, and especially if you are using in a pot, you know, more than three, I think I've done some projects with just three in the past, but you really need to up the acid to get the colors, the colors to bind. But we definitely, definitely got some space dyeing here. Um, and I think having the low water level really helped the colors kind of stay in place. But you will notice that today I did separate our like great, our cooler tones from our warmer tones. And I think I did that partly because I knew that those were things that worked well in the past. But also I know that when you mix them all, you get the colors spread a lot and you get a lot of green. So, all right, how, how many cups do we think 10 tablespoons is? I need like a, to do some conversions. So I think when I do some of the cake dyeing, maybe I'll just start right up with a lot of vinegar um, and we'll get going on that. But yeah, I am so, so excited with how this twist came out. Uh, actually, let me do, 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 do. Ha ha, I'm big now. Um, I'm really, really excited with this twist. We've got, we've got yellow and orange, and um, I'm expecting a little color to come up when I wash it because there's some orange left in the pot. Um, just like I expect, you know, a tiny bit of blue will come out when I wash this one. But I know that a lot of color will end up staying in the seams. And I'll do a recap with the finished dried yarns of these two. But let's check in on our violet friend. Oh yeah, so this still looks like a lot of color, but the color, this blue color is starting to clear. Um, we did get, because I added so much acid, we did get some color around the edge as well, but let me grab, I'm going to go ahead and remove this as well. I mean, I'm a bit of a, you know, I don't like wasting and I know that with these residual dye, all the residual dye that's in all these pots, I could dye some fiber, um, in that it wouldn't give a ton of color because it is relatively pale, but I, I will show this on the other camera in a second. What I am going to do, and now that I have all the pots off, is, no, this one was a separate one, but I will, actually no, maybe I'll do this separate. I wanted to get some paper towels and show off how much color is left in these pots. So of, I don't care where the colors were true. So here are the two blues. Do you see any blue on these paper towels? Not really. Now the yellow, there is a tiny bit of yellow here, but ultimately even though, and actually even on the camera, it does the blues look less intense than they do on the, the camera that really isn't that much dye there because our original paper towel 
from when I was like tapping and dyeing stuff. We've got a lot of color on here. Um, so sometimes it looks like there's a lot more dye left than there really, really is. And oh, I can. Uh, all right, I'm, I'm enjoying using two cameras. Okay, so this, here is our violet that we just dyed. And we did this one a lot faster than we did the, and with a lot less vinegar than we did the, with the other ones. And the colors aren't quite reading true. The reds aren't coming through. So we've got a magenta and then almost like an electric blue in here. And I think everything for you guys is reading, uh, I mean, maybe like a dark purple, but not really the magenta. If you grab some food grade citric acid, um, so I have citric acid in my, I like to make like fizzy bath bombs and stuff. So I have citric acid in my house. I just haven't, haven't started using it yet. Um, and I need to do, and I plan to do some comparisons at some point between citric acid and vinegar. Um, I don't personally mind the smell of vinegar, but I know some people don't like it. And so I need to figure out a little bit about the proportions of citric acid to get similar results. But uh, yeah, I think dyeing this twist is cool. And I don't think it's the yarn itself that was making things more stubborn. I think that really it is that, you know, when we checked the pH and saw that after, what was it after four tablespoons of vinegar and probably in each of them between maybe four and five cups of water, after four tablespoons of vinegar, the pH was neutral. And you know, when we did in four cups of water, two tablespoons of vinegar with no dye, we saw that the pH was, you know, five or six or something. So, you know, there was a lot of, a lot more base in the dye tablets than I had even anticipated to bring the pH up to a neutral seven. Uh, 10 tablespoons is just shy of two thirds a cup. Thank you so much. Uh, how much dye do you think will wash out of the violet dyed yarn? Not very much at all. Uh, you know, I'll show I'll show this one in the in the recap as well. But the I'll probably see a tiny bit of blue come out because when so when when there is a little bit of color left in the dye pot, and then I wash the yarn. Sometimes you'll see because since th these are so wet, you'll see some of that color come out. But with food coloring things usually run clear. The water usually runs clear really, really fast. Usually in the like minute, within the minute that I show on in the, in the videos. Uh, you mentioned your chemistry degree on these podcasts. Um, would you share? Um, yeah, yeah. I can tell you guys a little bit about, so, uh, I went to, uh, well, I went to high school in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and then I went to Wellesley college, uh, where I got a, bachelor's in biochemistry. And then I went to Harvard um, and I did a degree at Harvard Medical School, a PhD program that was based at Harvard Medical School. And I have a PhD in biochemistry and molecular pharmacology. And my dissertation is on the uh, biosynthesis of nit nitrogen phosphate bonds. And I did, I was studying mechanistic enzymology. And so I was looking at um, the way that different enzymes in bacterial biosynthetic pathways would make um, these nitrogen phosphorus bonds. And so I thought that, that was something that was pretty cool. And I have a really, really cool enzyme out there. A shout out to MCCB. <laughs> but yeah, that is, that is the like short version of my academic pedigree. And then What's funny is that, so I was in grad school and we were on a ski trip. And for some reason, I don't know if I was just skipping this trip entirely or if I had done one day and one day of skiing was enough for me, but I was staying home and I was the only person staying home in the cabin where we were staying. And I was a little bored. I'd gone, I'd gotten food for dinner and I'd thought about that and I was like, gee, what can I do? And so I was looking, researching ear flat hat patterns. And I started making a list of the free patterns that I saw in like a Word document and I'd have the link and I'd make some notes about it. So there was, I was looking for something and I just didn't find one quite like it. 
And I was like, I wish that someone just had a list somewhere of these patterns so that way I could find something easily. And then I was like, oh, I know. Why don't I share the list that I just made? Maybe someone will find it useful. And so that was, well, I guess technically that was probably the third Chemnitz post. I think I shared some of my other projects first, but that's how Chemnitz was started. I was bored, looking for something, couldn't find it, decided to share my hard work because, you know, someone might find this useful. And I think that's still one of my top performing <laughs> posts. So this was before I was on Ravelry or anything like that. So I was just by myself and, you know, and then I, writing about my projects and keeping this Chemnitz as a lab notebook for myself inspired me to do more. And so I was like, oh, I should try cables or, oh, I should try this. And so it just, you know, that kept going and was really, really inspiring for me. Um, how much dye do you think? Oh, that, I already answered that question. But so, yeah, that's, you know, at the end of this, what, almost two hour stream, that's a little bit about, uh, a little bit about me. But yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with me for so long as we we're fighting against the lack of acidity in our dark pots. <laughs> but anyway, um, I think that I will try to do another stream on Friday so that way we can use, kind of finish this off and over dye these cakes of yarn, these pretty, pretty, pretty cakes of yarn that are not technically bare yarn, but are pale. Uh, pale colored. I do have some darker gray stroll um, yarn in my stash that I want to over dye at some point. And I have a Dye Pot Weekly episode where I over dyed some highlighter yellow, so some neon yellow yarn, and those those would look really cool. But as kind of like a first thought, the tweed, so like I don't really see much of the like heathered quality anymore, but I haven't um, rinsed this yet. But some of these tweed like, nubs are, and you can kind of even see, they're somewhat visible. So I am very, very curious what this one will look like dry. And then the twist, the twist reads really, really nicely on here. I over dyed an acrylic twist yarn with some of the ripped dye more synthetic dye. And in that, the twist, like you almost because I think so much dot, I, there was so much dye in the pot, you almost cannot see the twist anymore at all. So I'm really, really happy that this twist kind of stayed through. Um, no, I haven't seen seen that about the superwash process. Um, ooh, the, so the Valentine's Day video I mentioned, um, I have. So I have the Stroll Sock yarn, I have Will of the Andes yarn, and I have Will of the Andes Superwash all in one video. And so you can really see the like, it, it, it's a really, really cool comparison. And I'm really, really excited to share that video with you guys. Um, but yeah, I do, I, I do need to learn more about the Superwash process because I don't even really know how they do that. Yeah, so when, it will probably take, so I'll wash these, um, Actually, they're almost cool, so I'll probably wash them as soon as I, or uh, a little bit after I sign off, and then, you know, by maybe by Friday morning, I should be able to have a like an update on them up on the channel. Um, and yeah, I think that I will try to do a live stream. It won't be. I don't. Actually, I could go two hours on a Friday, even though I pick up the kids uh, a bit earlier. Um, yeah, so I think I will probably in a little bit schedule a live stream for Friday so we can continue, continue with this adventure. But thank you so much for joining me today. I had a lot of fun. You guys were really engaging and that makes it fun for me to chat with you while we wait <laughs> for our yarn to die. Um, I also, in terms of other live, dying live streams, I have some new Wilton colors that you know, I think we'll need another dip diathon part three coming up so we can play around with some other colors and see see how they look and maybe we'll do some other color mixtures because those ones that you guys have suggested in the past have come out so, so cool. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for joining me. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. If you aren't a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe. 
it helps me out. You'll get notified. Um, I guess there's like a little bell. You can turn on notifications as well so you don't miss a live stream. But I believe that um, if you get notifications, you might, when I schedule a new live stream, you might get emailed the link, I think someone said. So that is something that is handy. But if I don't, oh, and you can come join the Chemnitz Lab Group on Facebook. And then you can share your own dyeing adventures. And there's, even if I'm not, like, there's a lot of people who can, who are in the group who will ask questions, answer questions, and we're all learning from each other. So it's a lot of fun. And I hope to see you on my next live stream, see you online. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Bye. I clicked the button, but I don't think I went away yet.